What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be fooling around with a title called Tinkerlands. I played around with this demo for a little bit prior to recording, and this is a game that has a fawning adoration for Terraria. I'll tell you that much right now. If you've never seen the game before, this is a free demo that's available on Steam right now. You can go play it right this second. The link is down below in the description, where you are a shipwrecked sailor on an island, and you've got to do all the stuff you do in Terraria. You build a base, you process goods, you fight with enemies, you summon bosses, you collect cool trinkets that do interesting things and make your character better. And along the way, you build houses for other people that are stranded on the island who will offer you more services and things that they can do for you. I was taken in by, it's got kind of like a forager style animation thing going on. And then the gameplay progression itself very much reminds me of Terraria. So we're going to dive in for about 30 minutes and see if this is something you wanted to add to your wish list, or if ultimately this doesn't feel like the kind of game that you want to play. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down there, but let's hit it. Right now, I'm just a little blue-haired guy on an island, man. There's not really much to talk about. I'm in the throes of collecting goods so that I can start building up a base. There's a treasure chest, though, right here. Can I get to that treasure chest? Can I have you? I can. What's inside of you? We've got the leather boots. They will increase my maximum speed. That sounds good. We've also got $16 and three bones. I'll take it. Sounds good to me. We can also repurpose these chests later, and we can put them inside of our base for storage. What does that do? Oh, I get more crit chance. Nice. A slime voodoo doll. It will summon the slime king. Terraria-style games and the first boss being a slime. Name a more iconic duo. Let me get some stuff gathered up here. And then we'll go ahead and get started with the craftinating. Under attack by some kind of slime while I was trying to gather. Poke him with a stick till he goes away. There we go. I poked him with a stick until I was successful. If in life you don't succeed, stab that bastard with a stick. That's that's the rule that I live by, alright? You find yourself a real good sharp pointy one. So having gathered up a reasonable amount of things, we gotta make our work table. You know, ever since Minecraft, you got to make a work table for everything. So we'll mash out a work table first. Uh, work table is inside of our inventory. We'll go ahead and just plop that down on the ground because I don't really have a place to live just yet. But inside of here, you're going to get your first swath of things that you can make for yourself. Everything from swords to bows to armor, all that kind of stuff. What I'm interested in, though, is the sawmill because I want to build up a base first and foremost. I don't like having my Ghiblis all out in the breeze right now, dude. They already got me down in my skivvies, and so I'd like to i would like to be inside of a building where warmth is potentially collected. I have been happy so far. The crafting and the building and also the harvesting, they all feel good. They've got kind of like a forager feel to it. I get the feeling this developer was a big fan of Forager, and I get the feeling that this developer was an enormous fan of Terraria. Those are the two influences that I feel inside the gameplay thus far. Another slime, huh? All right, I'm going to murder you. You tell your king that I'm coming, though. Ew, dude, he dropped a bunch of boogers on the ground. Dude, nighttime's getting kind of hectic. There's a lot of things that are trying to murder me right now. And this dude with the backpack isn't even trying to jump in, dude. Like, I'm fine with taking all your doubloons and monies and stuff. Who are you? Welcome! Uh, he's the traveling merchant, apparently, but I need, like... Damn, dude, you think the prices would be lower here just due to, an, like, there's, like, no people that want to buy your stuff. I'm just trying to farm up stuff so that I can actually have a base. The entire world seems to have a problem with me being a homeowner. So having gathered up, I would guess, enough stuff to start building a home, let's get after it. I'm just going to start putting in walls right here. Building feels pretty good. Definitely don't have any problems with the way things are snapping together and coming through. The bare bones basics, they seem to be here. I'm just going to start out with like a basic cube in the first place to get myself sheltered. If I could just have a minute from all the mobs that are trying to chew on my face. Let's go ahead and take that down to like 20 stones right there. Remind me, there we go. Remind me to keep my stuff in my inventory so that they stack up naturally. So there's just the first blueprint of our house right there. Looks good. Seems like the kind of cubic place I could occupy. This is where it's really going to get expensive though. Placing floors, man. It's always like impossible to predict how many floors I'm going to need to place. All right, let's get some wooden flooring in here. We earned this. Let's kind of put that right there. It looks like this is kind of creeping in from the outside. 
There we go. All fixed up. It didn't replace the floor tile. Like, it had some kind of creep going on that came on through. But there's the beginnings of our house. Everything in this game is pick upable and replaceable. You don't destroy your benches or anything when you smack them with a pickaxe to pick them up. So I'm going to decorate the place a little bit. I'm going to get it set up. I'm going to farm up some things. And then we'll see what we can do with the place. So having farmed a little bit, we now have a base of operations. A place that we live at. A place where we could put down some ch- Oh, we have to do the most important test here, dude. I forgot. Heartbreak is right around the corner. Alright, let's see what we got going here. Put all the wood inside the crate. Put all the stone inside the crate. Open the crafting interface. Yep, no crafting from chests. I knew it, dude. It feels like it's becoming more the standard. I, I don't under... Like, it feels like 10 years ago, we had this sorted out, and you could just craft out of chests, and it was all good. Seems like every game now just wants you to, like, spend half your gameplay time fiddling around rummaging through chests. The good news is all this stuff stacks up pretty high, and you've got a decently sized inventory. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a bed built. That'll give us our spawn point so that we have a place where we'll come back from if we die. There we go. Oh, I have to have a light inside of here. Apparently, we are picky about our light sources. All right, I'll put one right there. Now I can spawn in. See, I'm the opposite of that. I can't sleep at all unless the room is pitch black and there's no sound. I would like a stone pickaxe. That sounds like a really good idea. A stone axe also sounds like a equitable upgrade. So let's go ahead and do that. We're no longer using wooden tools. I'll probably just put old tools inside of here. It looks like you can shift click things in too, which is really, really nice. Throw the arrows in there for right now. I'd like to have a ranged weapon from the combat that I've seen so far. They want me to make a wooden bow. I think that should be easily doable. So let's just like mash out the rest of our fibers into strings. And then over here, we'll make a wooden bow. And then to jump up to the next tier, which I guess is a leaf gun, which has a much faster speed. Yes, I would like it to shoot rapidly. That would be good for me. We can also get a boomerang, I guess. That's kind of like a cool option. Looks like we could make a bone bow if we wanted to as well. How hard is it to make an arrow? Is it difficult? It just takes a lot of string. Oh, wow, that's actually pretty resource intensive. Oh, you get like 15, though, each time you do it. That's not that bad. I can take that. All right, let's swap out our old tools for new tools. Let's see how it does. Uh, it actually literally fires leaves out of your inventory. It doesn't fire arrows. So all those arrows we just made, completely and totally useless. Not going to be helpful here. The good news is I am an absolute wood chipper with this new axe. So I should be able to clear this area out pretty quickly and stock back up on ammunition for the old leaf bow. That is, unless a whole bunch of these little guys start bugging me. That's right, catch this arrow, dude. It looks like sometimes it fires inaccurately, though. That's what it looks like to me anyways. Either way, it kills goblins good. Finish him with my axe, patriot style. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Listening to the soundtrack, I'm not convinced that this soundtrack wasn't actually made by the same guy that did the Terraria soundtrack. It sounds really, really close. Like, it sounds like they're using a lot of the same MIDI or a lot of the same plugins or whatever. At least that's what it sounds like to me. Either way, let's survive the night for right now. Apparently, you get invaded once nighttime comes around. Yeah, get you right there. Give me them doubloons. So having farmed up a few more resources and avoided a few more attacks, I guess we got to pick our trajectory for what we want to do next. It looks like down in here we do have access to a furnace. We do have access to a stone anvil. We also have a cauldron that we can play around with, too. We've got a scarf that will allow us to go into the snow. When I was playing around to the game prior to, like, coming in here and recording the video... You die very quickly in the snow if you don't have appropriate clothing, so like make sure you do that. For now, let's get some basic armor. So we've got some wooden armor. Not exactly state of the art, but it'll have to do for right now. We'll get a furnace going too. That sounds like an okay plan. This game doesn't really divert from what is expected altogether that much, would be my initial observation. It's kind of like following the blueprints and the steps of like every other survival game out there. The good news is it does have a very charming art style and the animations are really top notch. Like you can tell whoever did the art for the game knows their way around some pixel art basically. I'm also going to whip together a wooden staff, so I got something to... Oh, it's a magic staff! Dude! 
Okay, apparently I've got magic now. I wanted a melee weapon, but I guess I've got a magic weapon. Maybe I'll put the leaf bow in here then. And we'll play around with the staff instead as like our main melee or as our main ranged weapon. And I guess I'll just take a sword for right now. Whatever's better than the stick that I currently have that I'm fighting enemies with. There we go. Now I've got a oh, it's got like a larger rate. Ooh, that hits a little bit harder. Good. Hitting harder is definitely what I want for right now. I do like that your character changes when you put on armor. So that's a nice little detail to throw on into the game. I do think we're going to have to expand the base into like a workshop and some other stuff too. If we want to have room to do all the things that we want to do. So it may be like farm a clock right now. I don't know exactly what I've got. Of I got no stone left. But we do have some of the big stone boulders out here. So I can grab these. Before the enemy comes... Oh, a source of bones. I saw that bone sword in there. Bone sword is ready. All right. Let's see if I can make a bone sword when I get back too. Oh, dude, is that a Yeti? Hold up. Nah, dude. Why is there a Yeti? There's a, there's a Yeti up here, dude. Okay, so I got like a problem. I need to... Ow. Yep, that's about what I thought would happen when a Yeti hit me. I felt like it was probably going to be painful. Maybe not that painful, but still pretty painful. All right, let's get back in. Hopefully, the Yeti doesn't follow me over here, dude. If he follows me over here, that's about to be a nuisance. That's about to be a mess. All right, so we got our anvil done. Uh, we got our bone sword done. So we have new equipment options. We also have access to a new crafting station down here, which I'll probably just put right there for right now. I don't really have any other place to put it. So now we can make coal. We can make gold. We've got copper. We've got spider ingots in there. And then over on this side is when we're going to start making the real good stuff. So I need to find my way to the wasteland, I guess. I do have an overworld map that we can take a look at. It's pretty sizable. Like, this is a demo. And the developer has put a chunk of work into this demo. Like, there is stuff out there. So I just need to cruise around for a little bit and see if I can find whatever this wasteland wood is. Maybe stumble my way across some copper or something of that ilk as well and we'll kind of see how the whole thing plays out it looks like we have some torches down here what's up with the torches down oh there's a jungle chest down here what does that do is it safe what's inside of there so we got wood we've got a talisman it will reduce enemy spawns okay i could go for that i don't want that old rotten looking chest inside my base it's not a good looking chest dude i have i have aesthetic preferences for my chests and that is not what i'm looking for right now Looks like we got some more torches over here too, but I'm like raring to spin up on this bone sword and just kind of like let the enemy have it. I do need more rocks. It looks like there's another chest over there as well. Let me see if I can get after it. There's got to be like a cave or like an underground area, right? Every game like this has some kind of cave or underground area. But in the meantime, let's grab this chest over here too. Looks like a little bit of cash. Got some rocks, some leaves, and a blessed wooden boomerang. So the game has Diablo-style modifiers on the equipment as well. All right, I can take that. What happens if I, like, ace a crab with this thing? Crab, what are you going to drop for me? I know you're going to drop something. You better drop something. We got, like, a shell and a doubloon. Apparently, the crabs in this universe are financially diversified. They've paid attention during all of their opportunities for financial literacy. They've been putting all of their money into ETFs. They are now collecting dividends. They're living high off the fat. I respect it. And there's slime voodoo ball, huh? I got like a million of those. Mana potion, coal, and we've got another crit charm. We've got six charm slots. So, like, that kind of paints a picture of, like, what you might be able to do. Oh, cool, like a little hedge maze. What you might be able to do later on down in the game... I'm going to go this way. Uh, once you get further on into the game, you know, like in Terraria, there were actually like legit builds with all the things you could put together from all the accessories. Max HP and MP up by 20%. I will oh, up by 20 flat. I'll take that for sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, nighttime is closing on in, and I feel like that makes for poor filming opportunities. So I'll see you in the morning, everybody. Well, daybreak has come, and it was a nonstop cavalcade of things that were trying to murder me. 
I think I'm gonna head back to base because the game seems to really, really want me to build houses for all the merchants and stuff. There's a little menu I discovered while I was waiting through the night where it tells you what each person wants inside their house, like their desires and whatnot, so that they'll move in. Maybe we'll give that a go. We'll see how the system functions. We've done a little bit of combat, we've done a little bit of crafting, we've done a little bit of gathering, so seems like a plan to me. Took an alternate route on the way back home, and it looks like there's like a baller chest over here. Something bad gonna happen when I touch this? Free bone bow. I'll take that. We got a glowing potion right there. That would also be nice. Honestly, not as dope as I thought it was gonna be, but we did get this sick chest right here. I'm gonna take that. So I'm just laying down the last couple pieces to maybe get the blacksmith to move in. I already got the guide to move in. I don't know if the guide's gonna give me quests or like what the guide's gonna do. But that should be the blacksmith's house right there. And I think I should still have enough, well, maybe not enough stone left over. What does the guide do? Like, it's actually kind of nice. You don't have to wait for him to move in. There's a button you push. Uh, so it looks like you should look for resources to build a house, survive, all those things, you know. And I guess I can put an item in right there and it'll tell me about it. Or they can just give me tips. Okay, sounds good. Don't leave any doors open, though. If you leave any doors open, you and I are no longer friends. I guess I'll just put this in the blacksmith's house so that I don't have to craft new ones. Might just be easier that way. So let's just drop those on in right there. They need a light source, too, so we'll put that right there. I wish that it attached to the wall in the background, though. That would look a little bit nicer. It's unfortunate that it sticks in the floor like that. I'm going to guess they're also probably going to want like a little door in right there just to make the place look a little bit more livable. I'm going to try to put a torch on the corner of like each building just to make it look a little bit nicer and more uniform around here and like spread the light around so that we got like a good light radius. I don't know if the enemies spawn inside the light radius or not. So is that good enough for the blacksmith to move in? She will now move in. There she is. I've heard that there's a monster in the old ruins inside the caves that creates some kind of strange material for ingots, and I want it. Ooh, she'll sell me, like, iron pickaxes and stuff, too, huh? I guess if I was feeling lazy and I didn't want to do it myself, that'd be probably a good place to get dug in. I don't know where this cave is at that everybody keeps referencing. I think there's one more person that can move in, and that's going to be the merchant. But it looks like I can just vendor stuff to the blacksmith, so I may wait a little bit before I add her on into kind of the, the compatriots that I've gathered. And off on another adventure. The morning is finally struck off, so I don't have to deal with constant goblin attacks. We want to be careful about going into the desert, because I think we get like a debuff if we get too hot, and then we like die from heat. There are some things that I can make in the crafting workbench that look like maybe they fix that up. But I'm just trying to actually, it looks like both of these biomes kind of like come to a collision over here. Maybe we'll go out into the desert biome. Maybe we'll give that a look and kind of like see what happens in there. Maybe we'll get like access to new things that we don't have access to right now. Another day, another bit of adventure. I'm kind of heading out to the west because to the south there's a biome that I can't go into until I have goggles. And to the east there's a biome I can't really go into because of a massive murderous yeti and also because I freeze to death like instantly. So I figured I would take a look around here and just kind of like see what we run into out in the west. Like maybe the landmass goes a little bit further. Move on roads if you can. It looks like roads, they give you like a movement speed bonus. A little field of sunflowers down here. They did a really great job with the pixel art. Like the game looks absolutely fantastic. Whoever did the artistry on it did a good job. The impacts to the attacks and whatnot feel pretty good too. The soundtrack is like right on the nose for something you would want to hear if you're playing Terraria. Pretty much like a Terraria knockoff as far as the soundtrack goes, unless it's the guy that actually did Terraria. This is one of those situations where I'll say something like that and then somebody be like, oh, it actually was the guy that did Terraria. All right, so let's go. Oh, we got copper over here, dude. Looks like I can have that. Can I go further out into the desert or am I going to die horribly? This must be the wasteland out here. I was wondering where I get sand from, too. Yeah, I'll grab that right there. Let me get as much copper as possible. I'm also hoping... Ooh, there's a mummy, huh? Oh, my God. Oh, they wrap you up in bandages. Gotcha. Okay, so we kind of want to, like, fight these guys from a distance if we can. We don't want to get directly hit by them. Otherwise, they run us down and pain is incoming. Try to line up right there. Oh, he almost got me. He almost got me, dude. That was a close one. All right, so we got the mummy bandages. 
I don't know if those are going to be useful for anything, but if I can kind of just, like, lap along the edges... Oh, listen, you. I'm low on health right now, and I don't feel like dealing with your shenanigans, all right? Just here for a little bit of copper so that I can go up to the next tier and I can have some nice things. I deserve nice things. I work. I pay my bills and stuff. I handle my responsibilities. And that means I get to have nice things. What is that thing, dude? Oh my god, he's a missile launcher. Okay. How tough is the missile launcher? Not that tough, actually. Pretty, pretty, pretty wispy chin on him. There we go. We got you covered. We got another mummy over here that I got to worry about, though. And it's the daytime. How bad is this place going to get at night, dude? You know it's got to be pretty bad. All right, so we got that right there. I saw this huge copper node down here, and I want... Oh, dude, there's so many of them. Okay, never mind. I take back all my, I take back all my ambitions and all the things I ever wanted to accomplish. And I have now dedicated my life to fleeing in fear. Kill the mummy, please. Oh, my God. Put me back on the boomerang. Can I have a few more of those things that make the enemy spawn less, please? I need to stack up like 30 of those. I'm going to give this a go, but I don't know if I'm going to get it done before I roast to death. Okay. Only other way, I kind of needed to get back to base anyways, so that honestly isn't that big of a setback. I think I'm okay with it. Uh, we've got some copper in here. It takes a lot of copper to make ingots. But maybe we'll have enough to make something. Oh, I still need the wasteland wood, though. I'm gonna make a copper sword or, like, a copper spear. Might not be a bad idea. We are getting chunked pretty hard, too. So I think there's the argument to be made that I could get into, like... Let's get the copper spear for now. What does the copper spear do for me? So 18 melee damage... It's definitely a considerable DPS increase. I'll take that. That's all right. I just got to get used to the, like, little up and in stabby motion. That's all. So I found this little guy out in the woods, the bard. He says he can protect me from the desert. So, like, I kind of want to give that a go. I can two-shot goblins at this point, so that's a real nice place to be. And the spear gives you really nice range, too. Maybe. I mean, it's honestly easier just to suicide. and go, Do I lose anything when I die? I don't think I even lose anything when I die. So why not just, like, throw myself on the sword of a goblin to get back to base instead of walking? You know what I mean? I was hoping there'd be, like, a hearthstone mechanic in there somewhere on a timer so that I can just, whoop, 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 like, go back to base. But So what are the bard's requirements for moving on in? He just wants nine tiles. That's it? Oh, he's easy peasy, dude. I just got to, like, clear some trees over here, and then we'll be all good to go. Let's throw the capstones on this guy over here. We'll put in some floor tiles. We'll get him completely enclosed by walls, since apparently that's what strokes his jimmies. I don't have any coal, and I don't have any thread, so I can't put a light source inside of here right now. I should have the stuff for the thread, though, and I think I can buy the coal from the blacksmith over here. Since it's like a rare spawn off of other stuff. What does reforging do? 19% knockback. Ooh, I made a legendary copper spear. The damage went up by five. Look at all those damage bonuses, dude. That's what's up. Does it look any different? It still looks the same, but trust me, it's better. All right? It says so on the tooltip. The name is in a different color. And if I know one thing about video games, it's that if the name is in a different color, we win. Uh, I will... Yeah, I'll buy out like 10 of that. That sounds good. Let's put the door in over here. Throw that up there. Need a torch. Oh, I have 44 torches. Never mind. Apparently, I'm just bad at my job. All right, we'll put that right there. We'll put that right there. We're going to make it look ambient, all right? We're going to make it look like there's like a stage light ring. There's like stage lighting right there. Everything looks pretty cool. Let's go inside and see if he'll summon. He will! Huzzah! The bard has joined the community. I shall power you up with magical songs of enchantment. I guess I have, I guess I have protection from the desert now, so we can head back on in there. Take note, though, it's only 10 minutes of protect protection from the buff. So, like, we're going to have to, like, hit it hard and hit it fast out here 
to grab all the little things that we need in order to survive. I don't know if like wasteland trees are out here too. We honestly can't fight with a lot of things that are out here either. Like we get hit like twice and we're dead. So I need to get these upgrade thingies so that I can get into copper armor, which I'm guessing is like the armor de facto of this area that you want to protect yourself with. I don't see anything that looks like wood, but I'll try to chop down a cactus in a second and see if that does it. I have my dow- ow. I have my- ooh, is that wasteland wood right there? That's got to be wasteland wood right there. I like how the different slimes that are different colors have different behaviors. That's a nice little detail. Like, some of them do like a bouncy ball thing at you. Some of them charge at you. Uh, some of them are, you know, like mortars that fly through the air. Well, we have a weapon that kills mummies now. Aw, oh, dude, is that a golem? Ow. That was incredibly painful. Dude, it's getting intense down here. It's getting a little bit wild and crazy with all them on different firing patterns. I don't know how this is going to go. But I need to stop kiting to places that I've already been and, like, start killing these dudes. It looks like I can throw multi-rang if I want to. That's kind of sick. Like, I can handle one of these desert enemies at a time, but any more than that, it's starting to get a little bit hairy. They do drop better money than everybody else, so that's kind of nice. Mumster, I got a spear for you. There you go. Taste that thing. Take it straight to the head. But so far, this seems to be really, really promising. Everything feels really smooth. Everything feels really good. I think weapon swapping could be a little bit tighter in the throes of battle. Sometimes you got to hit the button a couple times before it swaps on out, like if you're in an animation or whatever else. Getting that up to the same level that it is in, like, Terraria would be a really good idea. But thus far, the enemies are interesting. They are varied. The enemy variety inside of this demo is quite good. The animation is nice. The hit feedback is good. The soundtrack is good. I don't really have much to complain about here except for, like, no crafting out of chests. That's pretty much my only observation about this whole thing. I would like to... Basically, everything inside chests inside my entire settlement. If I go to a workbench, I should just be able to grab out of that real fast. I think is kind of where I'm at. Can I dodge that that close? I didn't know. But anyways, this has been a fun little foray. I'll leave the rest of I mean, it seems like there's a lot of content inside this demo. Because I've been playing for an hour, hour and a half, and I'm not even, like, into copper tier yet. I've still been, like, tooling around playing with the systems and whatnot, getting a feel for it. And so it goes all the way up to, like, a third or fourth tier inside this demo. I'm guessing there's, like, multiple bosses you can play around with, too. I suppose I could try to summon the slime boss while we're on our way out. Do it, Slime King. Bring it. Where you at? What you want, Slime? Oh, he's got like a little beard. He's got like a little Slime King beard. Okay, so like Slime King plus all this other stuff is not ideal for me. I would prefer for that to not be a thing. I'm going to go back into this biome real fast and we'll fight him over here. The problem is there's not a lot of good pathing over here. Get him. Yep, let him have it. I'm in the water now, though. That's probably bad. If I could just get a couple more crits, dude, I'd be pretty amped about my situation right now. Slime King's down. We still got to deal with this little idiot that followed us in from the desert, but hey, we got the kill. Apparently, he's like an intro boss. He's kind of like that easy-peasy boss that they just feed you up the gimme right there. What did he drop? I didn't even see what he had on him. We got some cactus in there. Oh, we've got his, we've got higher luck with a little, oh, it doesn't put the mustache on our character though. It should definitely put the mustache on. That is way too fine of a mustache right there to not have it show up on the character. I'm just saying developer, if I'm gonna have a mustache on, I should, my character should get a mustache. That's all that I'm saying. He should get that, that slime right there. We killed him and we peeled off his mustache and I feel like we earned the W right there, but like, my character should have a mustache right now. But all in all, I'm fairly impressed with this. As long as you're not expecting it to do anything too far outside the wheelhouse of stuff you've already seen from Terraria, it seems to be a really, really high copy, top-down sort of facsimile of that game, just in case you never liked the platforming and the jumping around. Which, I'll be honest with you, I always prefer games from this perspective. I don't like platforming one tiny bit. I like Terraria, but the platforming is something I tolerate because the rest of the game is so fantastic. It seems like they've got their influences all dialed in from Forager... You know, to Forsaken Isle, to Terraria with the progression and the way that items drop. It's not doing anything thus far that's particularly 
individualistic or like hyper interesting with the equation. I would say if I was to give a piece of advice, that would be my piece of advice is like, okay, but like, what do you have planned for the future that's going to distinguish this game from its compatriots? But the good news is the game is still currently in development. This is just a promo demo right here. Uh, so this is, you know, not the final product. This is just a demo that was put out by the developer or possibly even the publisher just to get, like, to gauge public interest and whatnot. And it's a pretty generous demo from where I'm sitting right now. My name is Flattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with Tinkerlands. Tomorrow, we'll be playing around with something else. Thank you for spending your time with me, and that's about all I got for you. Catch y'all next time. Bye, folks.